Good evening, everybody. How are you guys doing Hi, tonight? Everyone. Just wanted to jump on here and talk to you tonight. Um, Sherilyn and I want to bring this topic of defeating difficult times. Um, but before we jump in, we just wanted to um, say, you know what? We're not uh, marriage counselors. Um, we are not uh, your professionals that you would go to and got all the, de the degrees in psychology and so on and so forth. But we literally want to share our testimony. I, you know what, our, we've, I don't really think we've ever said this uh, to this extent, but every topic that we cover and that we have covered thus far has literally been our testimony because it's been an experience that we've been through and an experience that we have been victorious in using the Word of God. Yeah. So we're just excited that the Word of God is so potent that everything that we talked about or that we have ever shared with you concerning your relationship or our relationship has been a testimony. Right. And it's been a testament to the fact that the Word of God and those laws that are embedded in every scripture, they do work if you have faith and if you apply them faithfully. And so we just want to share that, you know what, we are, uh, we're not your, your professionals uh, giving advice. We literally have been the kind of uh, couple that chased after information. Um, we didn't seek the information as, as advice. We seeked it as resources, and then we let our spirit and our intellect digest that information so that we can be able to make better decisions along the way. And so this is exciting that, you know, we are in a place in our life where we feel like, you know, we need to use the, the victories that we've, able to, we've been able to uh, gain from using God's word and sharing them as a testimony to you. So tonight we want to talk about defeating difficult times in your relationship. And um, a lot of it is going to be uh, done through teamwork and it's going to be done through your intimacy. So I want to talk, I'm going to drop tonight, we're gonna, I'm going to drop a lot of different nuggets on what should be done. And my wife is going to gonna, gonna bring some of her story and also the word to show you how um, that is so effective in making it happen. And so I'm going to run through some, some suggestions. There's so much information that I'd like to share so I'm going to go fast all right so here we go one of the biggest things that we suggest that you do and we've done it is uh, marriage retreats or events before we go into solutions let's talk about what happens in marriage um, mm -hmm. uh, one of the things one of the reasons why I agreed and came in agreement with Joel and doing these uh, these uh, videos mm -hmm. first of all like he said we're not we're not experts right. um, and one of the last thing I want to do is come on you know this is the internet anyone could be listening to what we're saying and we don't want anyone to take what we're saying and then uh, apply it and then say we you you said you know they said this what we like Joel said is testimony we just want to give people hope because um, given our background and the fact that we we did not know anything about marriage and getting into marriage only because we were so in love. I mean, we met at 14 years old. We were so in love, high school sweethearts. Um, got married at the age of 20. We're now 40, so we're going to be married this year in December, 20 years. And getting getting married at a young age, one. Number two, um, getting married in, in in a culture where marriage is not something that a lot of people did. Um, number three, um, married married in a society where marriage is frowned upon and it's not a cool thing. Um, and number four, with so many, the divorce rate being so high. We just want to give you guys hope that when you're going through trials and tribulations in your marriage, do not give up. Absolutely. Because there is an answer, there is a solution to to what it. I don't. It doesn't matter what your relationship looks like. One of the things I've learned through our marriage is how to truly love. I lo I, I learned through my, our marriage what love meant, and that's what I'm going to talk about tonight. What ro love really means. Um, you know, there there are times when you're going through the difficult times in your marriage when you feel like you're in a prison of unhappiness and you're in and you're in emotional turmoil. You'll um through those things that we went through. The emotional turmoil, the prison of unhappiness, mm -hmm. um, the hopelessness. This is where I learned what true love is. And this is what I would like to share with you guys tonight. What really is 
is true love. Mm -hmm. And I believe your marriage, your relationship will reveal and help you to understand what true love is. So you're going maybe going through a lot of stuff now. Mm -hmm. I mean, and want hopeless. You don't even want to listen to us tonight. Um, the two of us to being together might be make you want to gag. Uh, you know, you might be like, okay, whatever. But I just want to say, do not, do not move. Don't change just the the screen yet. Just listen to what we have to say tonight, and, if, and then, and then, um, you know, you know, you pray about it, of course, and you just sit down and really, really, really look into um your relationship and 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 yourself and see that, and you'll see um that you know change can happen and there absolutely. is hope. Yep. For you, and if you guys can both look at this together, that would be great. Yeah. Um. But if one of you is looking at it, then you know what? Uh, it's your responsibility as the one that's getting the information, um, to pray, yeah. to look, to apply for you, and then to pray. Um. So we're talking about defeating difficult times, and there's so many things that can cause difficult times mm -hmm. to come upon you. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I've experienced that caused difficult times in our relationship from the get-go is, is me, and I can speak for myself, me refusing to accept the fact that I have to change. Mm -hmm. I cannot operate as a selfish individual as if I'm in this by myself. Mm -hmm. And so I have to change. Um, and, you know, and so change is a threatening thing to any human yes. being. Yeah. Um, and so if we want to continue in the same path and we don't change, we'll experience difficult times. It can be children. Yeah. It can be having children and having uh, any kind of challenge with a child. Um, I know uh, families or young couples that have children. I know young couples that have children with disabilities. Mm -hmm. I have uh, know young couples that have children um, that have medical challenges. And now this is now a strain on the relationship. Right. Uh, it can be a challenge imposed by a uh, crisis in the general family and now an in-law is involved in your household and it's making life difficult for your marriage. Difficult years or seasons in your relationship can come up front when you just get married. They can come down the line after five years. They can come 10, 15 years down the line when mm -hmm. circumstances and life changes. Yeah. Because you see, we all have a certain expectation for our marriage and our relationship. And then when life throws us a curveball and those expectations are not met or those expectations have to shift, now we are faced with difficult times. But what I'm going to tell you is this much. The antidote to difficult time is you and your spouse agreeing up front that, you know what, we don't know it all and we don't know what's going to happen next. But guess what? We will be a team and we will conquer and discover and learn and grow through this together. Right. And if you agree that no matter what's beaten down your door or what's waiting for you when you step out of your house, that the two of you will always be in agreement mm -hmm. and that you will always foster intimacy in your relationship. And I, the word intimacy is a broad one. I, I'm using it in the context of, 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 of a wholeness and a communication and a tightness, um, not just you know, the physical intimacy. Um, if you agree that your intimacy will grow and you will continue to embrace one another and be a team at all times, then I don't care what the situation is or how long the season is. If you guys be uh, uh, stay in that mode, you will always overcome them. And I just want to drop some stuff tonight that we have done and that we have used and, and the word of God that we have used to defeat difficult times. And um, you know what? A lot of our difficulties, Sherilyn, I, 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 could, I can share this with confidence. Um, even in some of our difficult times, we still experience a whole lot of joy because we are, are getting to a place and we continue to grow to a place where our joy does not come from the circumstances that we face. It comes from the togetherness that we continue to foster in our relationship mm -hmm. with God. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I say with God because he's included in that process. You see what I'm saying? So let me talk to you tonight about a few things that can be done 
and that should be done, in my opinion, to continue to Before fight you against go, that. Let me, let me get this thought process off my mind. First of all, if you're married, um, uh, a lot of us, we, we, we made a covenant, you know, remember, till death do us part and all those wonderful things that we said mm -hmm. when we were all happy and excited and elated. Um, I want to encourage you to go back and, rem and and say your vows over That's part because of the the vows the <laughs> vows are not vows to each other we thought we made covenant to each other we don't make we did we didn't make covenant to each other mm -hmm. remember you did it in the presence of God. You made a covenant with God. And when you make a covenant with God, guess what? You can't really break it. So one of the things, um, that's what I've learned. And, mm -hmm. and, and that was always in my mind. And the, um, one of the things we, we knew for sure that divorce is not even an option. So we, since divorce was not an option, how can we make this work? Mm -hmm. For one, I know I'm, I'm, I'm a strong-minded individual, strong-willed individual. And when I make a decision, I want to make sure that that decision is the right decision. And I will do everything I can possibly to make that decision work. And even if it's not, um, not work if it's wrong, but work in, in, in the truth sense. It, you know, if I'm, if I'm wrong, then let that be revealed. Mm -hmm. And here's another thing and I'd like to say to you guys also, just as a preface, because um, a lot of times we can overlook some details. If you have been in a relationship that ended in divorce, this conversation is not a con conversation a of condemnation. No. Um, it's a conversation you. for you mm -hmm. to go from where you are to where you need to be successfully. If it's mm -hmm. happened, well, you don't have to repeat that cycle again. Mm -hmm. um, here's the other thing I want to say. Defeating difficult times, um, I wouldn't suggest, and I'm not suggesting that a difficult time like abuse and a difficult time like you dealing with things that are life-threatening, um, defeating that, you have to use wisdom as to what that means. And because we're not a shrink or a psychologist, we're not giving advice about how to handle something like that. But what I'm saying is if you are in a dangerous situation, you need to seek professional help. What we're saying to you tonight is... Um, based on our experience and based on all the difficulties that we've gone through, we were able to submit together in agreement to God's word and then apply them to our life and see how that has changed our relationship and how that affects our children, our family, and even our community as we continue to do what God says to do about our relationship. So can we okay. jump in? Yes, this is how we win. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to jump in. The first thing that I want to talk to you about is exposing yourself to new information. Yeah. And so there's always information out there in the form of either couples retreats or important um, conferences and stuff like that concerning your relationship that you can attend. And what those things do is they don't change your life overnight. You learn something new every time you expose yourself to new information. The Word of God tells us that we should not be confirmed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of our mind. Right. And so what happens is when you find yourself in a situation where you go to people that are teaching at a conference and they or a retreat and they have been grown and groomed in the Word of God and groomed in principles that govern marriages, you'll see yourself in a different light because you see how you react and respond to different things when you're exposed to an atmosphere that's doing brain surgery on you. They're doing what happens to you is when you sit there in submission, willing and ready to receive and learn, mm -hmm. you literally have brain surgery being done to you. So your emotions are being worked on, your spirit man is being worked on, and literally they challenge your thought process. So you're almost doing a brain surgery emotionally and, 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 and mentally. And so have you look at yourself from a different perspective and then you learn and grow. You see how you respond. I remember one time I finally got a revelation and I realized, man, I responded inappropriately to something that uh, my wife did very often and I saw it as an offense when I should have seen it as just gathering information to learn and to know her better. And so one event got me to challenge the way I reacted and respond to something. If I didn't go to that event, that would have been another moment missed for me to grow up in that one specific area. So that thing that was hindering me from moving my relationship to another level would not have been defeated if I didn't put myself in that environment. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? 
And so we need to regularly make it uh, uh, our business as couples to find ourselves in environments that are going to challenge us to think about how we do things. Anything you want to share on that? No, you're, that's, I'm in agreement. Absolutely. Yeah. Here's another one that I recommend and that we recommend that you do. Talk more to your partner than you talk to your friends. Yes. Very, very yeah. important. There has to be a distinct difference when you look at your relationship with your spouse mm -hmm. and when you look at your relationship with others. If your conversation level and your depth of intimacy with your spouse is at the same level as it is with your friends concerning your life, there's a problem there. Yeah. Because what that's saying is you have more outside influence speaking into your household into your marriage and ultimately speaking into your family. If you guys have children or you plan on having children, you have more outside influence uh, coming into your doorway via your ears, your eyes, every sense that you allow people to pour into you. Mm -hmm. So you should have more dialogue and intimacy here in your relationship than you have with outside influences whether it be friends or other family members mm -hmm. you know the bible did tell us that when we uh, leave our parents house we should be leaving to cleave to our spouse right and the two shall become and the one two shall become and the one. lack of and the conversation too much outside influence into the relationship too many people talking into your relationship hinders that um, coming together or their oneness process and because of a lot of confusion and you have too many things going on we are emotionally um we're going to be emotionally depleted and we'll be uh we'll, we won't be able to cleave to our spouse the way we're supposed to cleave to become that one because there's too many people speaking into our relationship absolutely and so it's it, it's really important that that this happens more Here's the thing that happens when, when we go through a bad season in our relationship. What we do or what we tend to do is we begin to talk to the other person. And then it, it, what can happen is both parties can begin to talk to the other person, which means that we're putting uh, the other person in their place, we're busy mm -hmm. giving them uh, our perspective on what they should be and what yes, they should become yes, yes. and what that does it it becomes offensive it becomes offensive because number one the number one need for a man is his honor and mm -hmm. respect and if he's being spoken to he feels dishonored and the number one need for a woman is security, security and safety and if she's being spoken to and not with she feels insecure and so right away we're there's a level of rejection and distance and a wedge that's coming in between the right. the, the relationship that's destroying it so right. we can't speak to one another but we got to speak with one another which involves a, a period of listening mm -hmm. by one party while the other express themselves exclusively and then it may even include the one that's listening asking questions for clarity because you're really interested in gathering information to really know how to work with your spouse right. you see what i'm saying and so the conversation shouldn't be external man like at this point these conversations are important for you to have in your home you don't really have time to be complaining and to bad mouth your spouse with the folks at your job or with your buddies down at the wherever you guys hang out and so once you develop the, the 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 intimacy and the respect and you guys know that you can trust each other with the fact that you'll have good dialogue and conversation in difficult times this is where this begins to develop here's what happens when you do that when you do that every difficult time that you face is actually like going to the gym because you know Every time you go to the gym, what you're doing is you're not damaging your body. You're actually strengthening your muscles and your organs. Mm -hmm. And so if you have good conversation and dialogue and you have decided before you, your first argument that you're going to get closer to each other when times get tough, what happens is every tough times that you face becomes your gym because that relationship becomes stronger 
coming out of every difficult situation you face if handled properly. Anything you want else you want to well, share? Well, I know. That? Well, Joel is giving great information, and this takes this is process. Mm -hmm. You know, to get to this point, I know initially you could be in a point where you're so angry with each other you don't even want to speak to each other. True. You don't want to have a you, you know the, the there's so many things we feel so hurt by each other at this point that, you know what, I don't want to hear you. And, um, you know, for Joel and I, so a lot of the times I would just shut down. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he could be saying the most wisest, most incredible things because he is wise and he really has a lot of good understanding. But at a point, I feel so hurt. I feel so rejected that, you know, I would shut down. And the same thing, he feels disrespected by, by something that I've done or did not include him in a decision that I was making. And then, you know, right now, this conversation can't happen. Mm -hmm. I remember when, when I was going through the most difficult times in our relationship, when I was shutting down a lot and I felt so uh, alone. And the same thing with Joel. We were just like we were two people just existing in the same home. I remember one time just crying out to God, and this is so. So this is this is how you. I found out, you know, how much God cared and loved loved me. Um, in all my frustration, you know, um, in all my own understanding and expectation, when everything wasn't working and I tried everything, I had to go to God. So one of the one of the scriptures that I uh, remember going to was. Um, 2 Corinthians 12, when I was blocking out everything that Joel was saying, and but at the same time, I wanted our marriage to work. Again, remember I said divorce was not an option. So guess what? I had to make something where I was desperate at this point. Um, so I just, uh, in a time, just broke down. And then God, Holy Spirit just took me to 2 Corinthians 12. It tell, And this is what it says. 2 Corinthians 12. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, because I was all into myself at that point, it's me, my I, woe is me. I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I plead with the Lord to take it away from me. Yes, yeah, sometimes like, why am I going through this difficult times in marriage? Why me? I've done all that I thought, thought was right. But he said to me, the Lord, my grace is sufficient for you. For my, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weakness, in insults, in hardship, in persecution, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am made strong. Now, a lot of the times I remember in the conversations, I was thinking so much about myself that I'm hurt or this happened to me that I didn't stop to realize the things that I was doing, what I wasn't doing for Joel. I was so being so focused on this being self, self, me, me, I, I, that I'm like, you know what? If I'm going through this, what about Joel? And that's what God got me to, to start thinking, uh, thinking about. He says, you know, my grace is sufficient. And all the time I would just say to myself, remember, and I say, my grace is sufficient. Every time I felt that Joel was saying something or doing something that wasn't, um, was hurting me, I, that's what I, that's what I would say to myself because all I wanted to be able to have the perspective of what he's going through, but the pain for me was so strong and vice versa. The same thing, you know, as I was praying, God was working with him, but I didn't know he was doing and what Joel was going through. But this was my personal experience. I had to pull up my big girl panties right now and say, you know what? If I really love, like I say, I, I said I love, guess what? Now is the time. Test the time. If I want to get married, if I want to get into a, a relationship, then guess what? what big girl you better you better ante up and get it done hmm. so now i had to really now become what it is that god was start calling me to do which is be a wife and i didn't know how to do that and i came into the relationship with a lot of um uh, unrealistic expectations yeah. of what joel should do or what a husband should be like and here it is god was revealing to me it's much more than that outside glamorous thing a lot of work had to be done inside um I don't know. Um, one of the things that we quote when we get married is uh, Second Corinthians, uh, First Corinthians thirteen, and we talk about the definition of love. Mm -hmm. But this is how I really understood what love love was. 
being demonstrated. And I'm going to go through it slow because a lot of times we read through it and it's like, okay, it sounds so beautiful. But right now, when we're going through our toughest time, it's when, when, we, when the true meaning of love is tested. Absolutely. You see, we mentioned Very in another true. conversation before that we talked about, we did a live that talked about what true love is. And true love is not an emotion. It is an act of a will. It's a decision. It's actually action work. So here, Cheryl, and talking about, oh, I'm so in love with Joel and he's the love of my life. But guess what? This is what God looked, um, God love looked like, the, the, the agape love. Love is patient. I had to ask myself, Sherilyn, are you patient with Joel? Mm -hmm. Are you patient with this process that you're going through? A lot of times the answer was no. Love is kind. Mm -hmm. Are you being kind, Joel? Guess what? I had to get checked there. It does not envy. It does not boast. Well, I was good. I didn't boast. I didn't envy. It is not proud. I was proud a lot of times because Sherilyn was smart. Sherilyn knew a lot of things, you know, and, and you couldn't touch me because, you know what? I'm bringing an awesome woman to you. You, you know what you got here, sir? <laughs> you know, I, I was all that. So I was a very proud individual. So guess what? That wasn't, a, you know, um, I, me, and I, I had to get checked in that area. It does not dishonor others. I had to ask that question. Am I dishonoring my husband? In a lot of ways, I was dishonoring my husband. It is not self-seeking. A lot of the times I was seeking my own, my own um, things for myself. It was I, me, I, why, look, look at me. Um, is it, it's not easily angered. Was I getting angered and upset when Joel touched a button? Of course, I was ready, you know, I was shut down. I wasn't the loud person, I was just shut down. And guess what? I got checked there. It keeps no record of wrong. Was I remembering? Well, I think I was good in this area. I never used to keep records of wrong. I usually forget a lot of stuff. <laughs> but keeping records of wrong, a lot of women do this. A lot of men do a lot it of too. People do a lot of people it. do generally. it generally. They yep. keep record. They have a long list of what you did to me. Mm -hmm. Love keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil but rejoice with the truth. Guess what? Through our, our marriage, it's to seek for truth. What truth, true marriage is. What mm -hmm. God's marriage is. What marriage looks like in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. And God's kind of marriage is a successful kind of marriage. And this is what we want. It, all, it always protects. Am I protecting my husband? Am I protecting his emotion? And I, am I, is he feeling protected when he comes into this home? You know, does he feel secure when he comes in? I'm, or am I just yelling at him and I I'm, I'm always have a problem or issue going on? You know, am I protecting my husband because I'm called to be the protector of his heart? And so, and it always trust. Do I trust my husband? And a lot of times, I did not trust my husband. And that was the reality of, um, of the situation. Always hopes. Was I hoping? And in our, in, in through the difficult times is when hope, Gotta come alive. And that's true love. I'm hoping that one day we will get out of this difficult moment. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping that we're gonna get through this. I'm hoping that our marriage will be the marriage that I dreamt about when I was a little girl. And definitely hope does not disappoint, as the Bible says. And I'm telling you, we have a tremendous um, uh, marriage mm -hmm. and it's getting better. It doesn't, it always persevere. And mm -hmm. guess what? There's no time for quitting. Whatever we're going through, we have to persevere in our relationship. Mm -hmm. We have to do whatever it takes. Never give up. Um, and, it ne and love never fails. And, and definitely, love never fails. Absolutely. Because when you're doing all those things, you'll notice that in your relationship, you get stronger and strong. It developed true love within Absolutely. you and within me, Absolutely. within Joel. So we're able to love each other effectively. So here's what I could tell you. Um... True love never fails and it doesn't give up, right? Yes. What, what I can tell you is now we're dealing with 20 years of marriage and about 27 years of friendship. What I can say is we've had sometimes very drawn out seasons in our marriage. We had years at points where um, it, it seemed like we really didn't know what we were doing yeah and we were you know we we, we were like wow we're we're so awesome together but we're dysfunctional yeah in so many ways <laughs> but what today when i look back on i think we got low battery yeah when i look back on on all that we've gone through and how you've responded in love based on that definition 
what it does for me, what it has done for me over the years, it has reinforced to me really how much you care. Because when I, now that I'm conscious of some of the stupid things that I've done, and then I look back and saw how you persevered through them and how you responded in the true definition of love. Now, from a, from a standpoint of victory, I'm like, whoa, you the real deal. <laughs> Right. So what happens is if she if Sherilyn had given up before I've gotten to a place where my eyes can see better and I have a better perspective based on the fact that she prayed for me and now I'm I'm, I'm healed in some areas. Mm -hmm. I would not have discovered and appreciated what her love did through that time, her patience. You see what I'm saying? Um, if I can do some of those things over again. Uh, I wouldn't do them because I realized how much patience it would have to take to put up with some of my behaviors back then. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? But the fact that she did, now that we've overcome that hump, um, let me tell you what, man. She's appreciated. She's oh, the real you. deal. Thank you see what I'm saying? Glory to God. And, and, and so I'm not saying, I'm mm -hmm. only saying that to say when you really love someone through the craziness, when you get on the other side of that craziness, that appreciation that is in store for you is incredible mm -hmm. because it speaks for itself. You see what I'm saying? Let's move on because my battery is running low. Um, here's what I'm going to say. It's easy to withdraw intimacy when times get tough. Yeah. Um, don't do it. Don't withdraw intimacy when times get tough. Um, here's what's easy to happen especially from the woman to the man's side. It's easy to withdraw sex, right? Now, let me say this. You may have a difficult time in some areas or, or some patches in your marriage when you know what? That's tough to happen because the hurt and the pain is so much. But here's what I would tell you not to, not to do. Don't disconnect totally to the point where you can't hold each other's hands. You see what I'm saying? Don't disconnect to the point where you can't Rub each, other's Rub each other's backs or shoulder. And if you have a tough day where you can't hold each other's hands and you can't rub each other's back and express some kind of physical touch that, you know, I'm still part of your team. If you have a day where you can't do it, don't make it be two days. Don't make it be a week. Because the longer that time expands, what you're saying is, I am now in the mode of rejecting you. Yeah. I am now in the mode of rejecting you. And what you will communicate indirectly is that you're not uh, an ally. You're an enemy. Right, right. And that is not where you want to go. Yeah, man, listen, it's difficult. Sometimes um, I'm in the middle of a conversation and I can hear a still small voice in my head say, just hug her. And I hear that voice in my head that says, just hug her. And in my mind, I'm like, but she just used a disrespectful tone to me and I just don't want to hug her. You know what I mean? And then I have to bite down and say, let me just give her a hug in the middle of this argument. You know how difficult that is? Mm -hmm. Who want to do that? Yeah. But those decisions have been the biggest victory mo uh, moves that one can make in the time of difficulty. You see what I'm saying? And that's because what that definition in 2 Corinthians 12 was talking about, you know, not keeping record of wrong and doing it when, even when in those difficult times. Absolutely. Here's another thing that's easy to do when you're in difficult seasons. The guy or whoever picks up their pillow and get an extra blanket from the closet and they get out of the bedroom and they go sleep on a couch or they go sleep in a spare room somewhere in the house. Now, let me tell you what. It might be wise to go lay down in the couch if you realize that you can't control your emotions and you may cause more damage staying close to that person the, one, the first night. But at some point, do not abandon your bedroom. Don't abandon your marital bed and sleep downstairs or sleep on a couch for a week, two weeks, a month, six months without being able to resolve that issue. Man, I'm telling you this much. To be straight up with you, um, that is, that's kind of that's immature. Because now we're adults, especially when you have children. Um, we, we have to get to the point where we're at least adult enough to resolve our differences. Mm -hmm. And the way we should do this is when you're on good terms, 
you should decide that this is how we're going to conduct ourselves if we have bad times. Mm -hmm. One thing that we had going on for us in some crazy years, and we've had an extended period of craziness, but one, but one thing that I appreciated with this girl right here mm -hmm. is that she knew how to press pause and go have a good time with the person that she was just arguing with. And I thought she was crazy because <laughs> she was able to do it. And I tell you what, that mode of operation has saved our life so many times. I remember we had this crazy blowout. Yes, there's holes in the wall somewhere in Brooklyn, New York to prove it. <laughs> we had this crazy blowout. And um, there was a p birthday party going on in East New York that night that we were invited to. And we just had this crazy fight. And I'm telling you what. She shocked the heck out of me because right after that fight, she said, you know what, boy, put on your clothes. Let's go to this party. Let's just forget this for right now. Let's go to this party and have a good time. And I was like, man, that's some perspective. Like, I don't know what, what, what overcame you that night to, to say you still want to go to this party with moi. Mm -hmm. But we put on our clothes, got in the car drove across Eastern Parkway to Par Sterling or one of those places to a basement party we were invited to. And we had a great time. We danced and whatever else came home, had a great time when we came home and we dealt with the issue later on. But guess what? That party changed our perspective. We were able to work that issue out and we had other issues after that. But we were crazy enough to know that this team, yeah. irregardless of how much we disagree and how much um, we're fighting some demons from our past or whatever, we will make sure that this team continue to stay intact. That don't yeah. happen overnight. And we're talking about 20 years to be where we are now, right? And still got work to do, but we have been able to endure months and years of dysfunction because we were a little bit radical about how we are able to move forward and apply some of these things that I'm sharing with you right now, right? So don't, don't, don't spend extended amounts of time sleeping in separate rooms and don't make it a lifestyle that you're not sleeping in your room um, together. Let's work it out. Here's another thing I would suggest. Write to one another. This is something Sherilyn did for a while. Um, she wrote some notes to me about how she really felt because it was easier for her to express herself in the notes um, I was quite intimidating in conversation <laughs> at times, <laughs> right? So she would mumble all over herself and just shut down because I'm so intimidating in the conversation. So she decided at times that, you know what? I'm going to write a note to him about how I really feel because I'll be able to, without interruption, and I used to interrupt, without interruption, I can express myself to him. So if you know that, you know what, it's difficult for you to communicate and you, there are details that you may not even remember, and that happens to me a lot, write it down and give it to that person for them to read. Writing to one another can really, really make a major difference in your communication. Yeah. And then when you guys are calm, it gives the other person that's reading it the time to process in peace yes. and let, let their inner voice, let their spirit speak to them while they're reading and digesting that information because what used to happen to me as I grab the note and go sit in the living room by myself and read it and then I would think to myself man I must have really heard her oh I didn't I didn't I didn't think about that that way and then when I calm down I would take that note go back in the room and I'd sit next to her on the bed and say you know what I didn't realize that this is this or sometimes I might start the argument right back up again because I'm still in battle mode and I don't want to concede or I don't want to you be mature. That? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> but at least it gave me an opportunity to read it uninterrupted and she was able to express herself without interruption. All right? Here's what I would recommend also. Talk about memories of the past. Talk, yeah. about, talk about why you guys got together again. Get back to that regularly. Um, it's important to get back to reminding yourself as to why you did what you did. What did you guys see in one another? Uh, are you still interested in the things that we talked about when we got started? Yeah. You want to share anything about that? No, basically, you're, you're on point in, in everything, basically. 
yeah go back and talk about those yeah. days um we still do to this moment um but here's another thing that i'd like to talk to you about not just go back and talk about why you got started but do you have goals and things that you want to do now that you're thinking about at this point in your life that you want to do five and ten years out because those are the things that will continue to draw you towards yes. growth and bring you together and move you forward so you got to talk about why you got started in the first place but also you have to continue to look at and this is what we do what, what do we want to do five years out ten years out what are we gonna doing uh, what we're gonna do with our life the other big one is dating each other Continue to date one another. Continue to plan ahead. And we did a whole, um, we did an entire topic yeah, on, on this that. about that. All right. So dating each other and become a team. And this is a big one for me. Become a team against the things that are attacking your relationship. Right. You got to recognize, you have to see, you have to recognize this whole process with a different eye. And the eye that you got to recognize it with is that there are external things that are attacking your relationship. If you view one another as the enemy, then the battle is already lost. Mm -hmm. The true enemy is just kicking back and watching you guys finish it off because you already have uh, misinterpreted and, 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 and misread what's happening here. Right. She's not my enemy. But at, you know what? On year five and year 10 and year whatever, I still thought that she was an enemy in the most, for the most part when we got into an argument mm -hmm. because I wasn't leading. You see what I'm saying? I wasn't proactive in leading my family. I wasn't proactive in sitting down with her and setting goals knowing that she is on the same page with me. See, if you don't have any uh, goals together that you guys have agreed on, that you're going down the same page, then you don't have any clue in your mind that you are on the same page. Right. The moment you establish a direction that you're going in, what that does for you is it tells you in the back of your head that you're on the same page. You see what I'm saying? Right. So you have to get into that mode. At some point, you know, and I'm talking to the husbands right now, at some point, you got to lead. And you have to set a standard that this is where we're going and you have to call the meeting and you got to say, hey, are you with me on this? You know what I mean? And you'd be surprised, man. Your lady want to be with you on it. She want to follow. She want to assist you in that process. And once you begin to go down the road where you have a goal as a couple, as a family, and if you start to dive into purposeful things that you want to do 10, 15 years out, and you guys are going in that direction. When arguments come up, it's hard for you to say, man, the same person that just sat with me and set goals is an enemy and not, a, right. and not an ally. You see what I'm saying? And so these are all things that come together over a period of time. But we just want to throw them out there because, you know, any little information that can give you an edge on the real enemy that's trying to finish your relationship... Um, it will help you. And, and all the believers know John 10, 10. You see, it says the, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Absolutely. But Jesus reminds us that he came so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. And he wants us to have rich relationship, marriages that are all of this world. And he wants us to succeed in everything we do. And your marriage is no different. I remember I was um, listening to... Uh, uh, Kevin L.A. Hewing, he was doing a, a extensive teaching on one scripture and I remember that scripture when we were going through um, our situation and um, uh, reading it, but then he amplified it and that's exactly what the Holy Spirit has dropped inside of me in the process. It's, John, um, I believe it's Job 14 1 that says um, mortals born to a woman is short are their days and many are their troubles i'm paraphrasing so you could go to job 14 1 which sets us up if we have the wrong expectations of our marriage mm -hmm. um and that there we won't have any challenges everything is going to be a bed of roses or it's gonna you know happily ever after kind of mindset then we've already set up ourselves for failure, for failure. and you know what disappointment never comes from what you find when you get to a destination yeah. it comes from having an expectation and then when you get there you realize you had a false expectation yes. so yes. Um, it, it, it's powerful what Sherilyn just mentioned and, and it, it's important to be able to do that here's what the, and I want to wrap up with this as the last point because we've been going for a while 
I would highly recommend that you find a, a, a church, if you're not involved in ministry or you don't go to hear the word of God, that you, that first of all, let me, let me, let me rephrase myself. First thing you want to do is you want to pursue God. Mm -hmm. And you don't need to be in a church building to pursue God, but I recommend that you find a, a good church. I recommend that you find a good church because it's good to be taught and hear the Word of God. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. But you want to also pursue God. Read, read your Bible. Listen to it on audio. Pray and agree together that you're going to pursue God together and find a good church together. Here's why I say that to you. There are some things in your relationship that may be bugging you and they don't go away. It may be things about each other that you just can't put wrap your mind around and that problem or whatever you perceive it to be as a problem, it just wouldn't go away. Sometimes the reason it doesn't go away is because it's really not a problem. Sometimes the problem is it is within us. Yeah. And what we need to be is we need to be grown and built so that we can now handle this next level of life that we haven't been able to conquer yet. Yeah. So sometimes it's not about removing what we perceive to be a problem. Sometimes it's about us becoming better so that we can handle what is in front of us. It's not a problem. It's a challenge. And so... Um, if I go out into the driveway and there's this big hunk of metal out there and it's in my way and I don't know how to deal with it, um, I might have to go get some help and figure out that it's called a car. <laughs> um, there's a driving school that can teach me how to use it and then I can just get in it and move it out of my way. And so it's not really a problem. It's an asset, but I, I just am not equipped to handle it. So it's been bothering me all this time because of lack of information, mm -hmm. lack of knowledge, lack of understanding. And so a place to grow, a place to be that you guys can enjoy and agree on um, uh, is, is a good church. Yeah. And, um, you know, not all churches are awesome, but you guys will know in your spirit when you find the right place. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And so we recommend... Uh, all these things because they're simply our testimony. These are things that we've dealt with. And then we finally discover that, you know what? God's got all the answers wrapped up in his word. Mm -hmm. They're all laws. It's not religion. It's literally laws that if violated, they're going to cause us pain. Just like if I violate the law of gravity by jumping off my roof. Whether I know that it's a, a law being violated or not, I'm going to get hurt. Or a speeding ticket, <laughs> violating the speed limit. <laughs> you right? Ticket. But now that you have the answer and that you know that there are laws embedded in the Word of God that actually make your relationship exciting, uh, all you got to do is study them and learn them and, and, and work them properly. And I'm make excited. sure that when you're communicating, Joel talked about a lot of things that we're going to be doing, you know, we recommend doing together as a couple. Mm -hmm. And remember in communicating with each other that a woman, everything, when, when the husbands, when you're speaking to your wife, everything for her should be coded in security. Absolutely. Um, you want to think about security, creating that security for her. And women, when you're speaking to your husband, make sure that everything is coded in respect and honor. Mm -hmm. Make him believe that it was his idea, basically. Mm -hmm. And um, it will, it, you know, your communication will be smooth. I don't know why it works, but it always do work. And God knows why he made it that way. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, and, and you know what? Just having the right heart for that. Yes, like that information, yes. knowing you that. Have, you you do, have to have the right heart. You got to exactly. do it with the right heart. That's why I'm saying that God always works on the inside of it, each individual. And that's why I give the definition of love. Because love is not an emotion, it's an action. And when you're doing those things, you know, you check on yourself. You know, am I doing Doing these things, as I mentioned in Second Corinthians twelve, it's really working on ourselves and and having the right heart. So when I go to Joel, I have an understanding of what it is. I'm just bringing a mental understanding to what the heart, you know, what your heart should, how you know that you have the right heart. Absolutely. So when I'm communicating with him, if I'm coming out of selfishness, if I'm coming out of keeping records of wrong, if I'm in patience, if I'm being prideful, then I know I'm coming with the wrong heart because it violates love. And so if I'm coming in with a heart of love, then I know that, you know what? 
I'm not keeping any records of wrong. I'm patient. I'm kind. You know, I'm hope. I have hope. Um, uh, you know, and um, the definition, Second Corinthians twelve. It will, it will be your night. A very good guide for you. Uh, awesome. So we hope that that you know just us having this conversation, cause that's what this was tonight. Just a conversation of us sharing what's been, um, what where we've been and um, some of the things that we've done. I hopefully um, that helps. And um, we look forward to, 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 to bringing these to you randomly um, from time to time to make sure that, you know, you know that you're not alone. Yes. Um, this, this, is, this, is a this is the most difficult undertaking that any human being would, would, would make. And that is joining together with another human being and becoming one. Yes. That is not an easy feat. Right. And so you shouldn't be distracted or feel like you're alone or yeah. your situation is so unique and so terrible. It's not. A difficulty in marriage literally is a promotion on a platter presented to you by yeah. God to say, if you conquer this, you your next phase would be you being closer to living in paradise. And I'm not kidding yeah. you. Every time you conquer a difficult time or season... Um, properly using the word the, and the laws of God, you're opening the door to to, to a really awesome um, yeah. lifestyle. Yeah. So um, we look forward to, to talking to you next time. Sherilyn, if you can close us out in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you all honor and, and praise. We thank you for each and every person listening here. Lord God, we thank you that you care about each and every one of your children. You've created them perfectly. You've created them with purpose and you for your own purpose. And you said in your word, Father God, that if we ask anything and if you abide in if we abide in you and your word abide in us, we can ask anything and it shall be unto us. I pray that each person that do that have the difficult question and going through the challenge, that they will seek you first. They will seek you. They will they will uh, call out to you and they will trust you with all their heart and do not lean on their own understanding. That they acknowledge that you're a heavenly our heavenly Father that cares about us, that you truly love us, and that there's nothing you won't do for us. Because if it wasn't so, you would not have sent us your own begotten Son to die for us so that we can have life and have it full. I thank you, Lord God, that revelation knowledge is, it belongs to your children, that our eyes will be open and our hearts be open. Anyone that has any hardened hearts, Father God, I pray that that hardened heart is softened now. Yeah. And I thank you that the Holy Spirit will re resound inside of them and that their eyes will be open to see as you, as you see them and know that they are children of the living, of the living God and the, you love them and there is nothing good that you would op with, um, withhold from them as long as they walk uprightly. Thank you for your word. Thank you for this time. And thank you for the opportunity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Guys, we'll see you next time. We love you. Hope this helps. Have a good night. All right. <laughs>